people like Ed Begley, Jr. I'm gonna to go to the grocery store on my hybrid electric bike. I can pedal or I can just use the throttle here. Ed Begley is the ideal of the modern Californian. Energy conscious, environmentally aware, and like the governor, a movie star. When I first tried solar electric photovoltaics in 1990, I put about 1,000 watts on my roof, and it worked very well. So I decided to try some more. I put another 1,000 watts, and then I put another 1,000 watts. But often when the sun is not shining, the wind is blowing. You get a good amount of power in a wind turbine like this. It's a perfect marriage with solar power, clean wind energy. His example has inspired his slightly competitive neighbor to embark on a similar path. Bill Nye, well known as the science guy, spends his free time greening his Studio City home in every way he can. Now this is a hybrid car. I mean, I get over 45 miles to the gallon. It's a great car, but Begley, he's got electric vehicles, all electric, zero emission, and he powers them up with his solar panels. Coming after you, Begley. Coming after you. This is uh, my rain barrel. This is my solar hot water tank. This is uh, the north side of my solar panel system. I got four kilowatts. Ed's got six. It's a whole new way of keeping up with the Joneses. Now, Begley's got a wind turbine. I don't have one. You know why? Well, it's on order. Every house, even Begley and Nye's, has to use some energy. Remember, the governor's aim is to make at least 15% of his emissions cuts by improving energy efficiency in private homes and commercial buildings. You want a refrigerator with the highest energy star rating, the same with your microwave, the same with your stove. The theory is, the more efficient your house, the less power you'll need. And that means less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. One of the biggest bang for your buck items you can have is compact fluorescent lighting. Bill Nye, I don't think, has dimmable compact fluorescence. I'll check on that, but I, I think I'm ahead of him yet again in this key area. Dimmable, dimmable. Sorry, Bill. This friendly competition isn't just socially responsible. It's money in their pockets. I did it to save the Earth. I did it because of the first Earth Day. I did it for a number of reasons. I quickly learned the first year I was saving money doing this cheap and easy stuff. Begley and Nye are not just exceptions. California is the most energy efficient state in the entire USA. In fact, over the last 35 years, as per capita electricity use in the country has soared 50%, California has remained flat. The question is, how much farther can it go? Because one thing becomes clear when you see what Begley and Nye have done. It's uh, $3,000. It costs a lot of money. I just do everything I can that I can afford, and that's what I do. But to hit the governor's 2020 targets for emissions reductions, most people will not have to go to these extremes. Sealing leaks in ducts and windows, adding insulation, and changing light bulbs would be enough. The California Energy Commission says the total cost to a typical household could be as little as $1,500. Some 70% of the efficiency target will be achieved in commercial properties. In the past, efficiency has been a safe investment with a guaranteed payback. Over the last 35 years, efficiency improvements have saved Californians over $50 billion. But what about the people who can't even afford the minimum improvements? people like many in the community of Richmond, California. This is Richmond, California. You've got extremely low income people, you've got, you know, crime, violence, a lot of economic desperation, you know, and uh, you can't be in a neighborhood like this talking about, let's save the polar bears. You know, they're not, they're not gonna feel you. Van Jones is an environmental activist. Today, he's in Richmond, a low-income area between San Francisco and Sacramento. And he sees one basic problem. The people and businesses here just don't have the money to buy energy-saving materials. 
You know, you got businesses like this one. I guarantee you, they've got uh, 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 old refrigeration that's using way too much energy. I guarantee you, you know, th those windows are, 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 are leaking a lot of energy. They're probably uh, 30 or 40 percent improvements you can do just right here. You do that in all of these little small businesses, um, you can make a big difference, but they can't afford it. Willie Mae Payne knows just what he means. She has every incentive to save energy. Those leaky window frames cost her too much in lost heat. My energy bills are high. They run approximately 250 or more per month, especially during the winter months. But she is caught in a classic poverty trap. She needs to save money to upgrade her windows. But until she upgrades her windows, she can't save any money. People like me, living in older homes, in neighborhoods like this, would love to do better for themselves. I can speak for myself personally. I would absolutely today change my windows and do anything necessary to make it better here. However, I am not financially able and neither are many of my neighbors. And this is where the governor's hopes for making savings in the residential sector may prove difficult. There are 12 million low-income people in the state of California. Without bringing them along, Jones warns that the whole plan will run into trouble. There's no way to beat global warming without weatherizing millions and millions of buildings. California will fail if it leaves out the majority of the state. And the majority of people in this state are people of color, low-income people, working people, who right now don't feel a part of this. They feel like it's just an eco-elite agenda for maybe the Hollywood crowd. Most communities like Richmond are not even involved. For now. But over the next 12 years, the governor plans to subsidize efficiency improvements for almost every low-income household in California at a cost of some $4 billion. It means he should hit his 15% efficiency target by 2020, though at a price. But to hit the long-term 2050 goal of an 80% reduction in CO2 emissions, the amount spent on subsidies will be much greater. Unless a revolution can come from a place like this, California's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. NOVA interviewed President Obama's energy secretary, Stephen Chu, while he was director of the lab. The wonderful thing about California is that the entire state is engaged on the climate change problem. California has, over the last several decades, shown a real leadership position in energy efficiency, and this laboratory became a premier institution for energy efficiency in the mid-70s and beyond. Triple-pane windows with insulating low-E coatings, automatic shades, daylight simulation software, advanced passive cooling. New technology offers hope that California can meet its aggressive efficiency targets. Having these very aggressive goals is actually a very good stimulus. I have a lab full of scientists that believe in these goals and they want to deliver. But delivering these innovations will take years. In the meantime, over the next 12 years, for efficiency improvements to homes and commercial buildings, Californians face upfront costs of some $50 billion, although the eventual payback could be even bigger. But a larger issue is where all of California's energy will come from in the first place. The governor wants to get 15% of his emissions cuts from power generation by the year 2020. With California's insatiable need for energy, is it possible? All things that make California what it is, the glitz, the glamour, the wealth, the businesses, big, small, and high tech, all of this devours energy. Energy is the lifeblood of a modern economy, and electricity in particular is becoming more important as we move further and further into the information age, the digital economy. It all runs on electrons. These electrons are shipped around the state by a complex network of wires and transmission lines known as the grid. It's operated from central control rooms like this one in Rosemead, California. Okay, From here, engineers take power from different sources.